So in this video, I'm going to do what I like to call a code along. I'm going to more or less solve a problem, uh, and I encourage you to code along with me as I'm going through the process, um, just so you can see sort of this is how my mind is working when I try and solve a problem. So in this case, I'm going to just solve uh, something from CodingBat. Uh, I, love, I love this website. I use it as inspiration for some of my problems um, in classes I've taught in the past. But OK, well, given some non-negative number, return true if that number is within two digits of some multiple of 10. OK, and it gives me some examples, but to walk through this uh, just a few different times so we can see that. So if we're thinking about something like 12, right? 12 is within two digits, one, two of 10, because 10 is a multiple of 10. So that's a true statement. Something like 15 is not going to be because as you can see, if I were to write out all those numbers up to get to 10, 15, 14, two, sorry, one, two, three, four, five. So it's not within two digits of 10. But this also expands out into larger numbers, 72. Well, again, what is uh, a multiple of 10 uh, that would be close to 72? It would be 70. So one, two, that's a true statement. Okay, all right, so we've got an idea of what we're looking at here. We need to be within uh, this threshold of 10. So when I think about that, how I'm going to go about doing this is I need to extract out that remainder. So just as that refresher, we're going to work off of the uh, modulo. Uh, again, that modulo or modulus, doesn't matter, it's you hear both of them, it is going to produce our remainder. And the idea is if I did something like uh, 72 divided by 10, that could be evaluated like this uh, in the long division style where, uh, oh, well, it skips over this first one and then it can go into, uh, 10 can go into 72 seven times. We would get a remainder of Two. So again, that's sort of where we're going with this, is that we're producing out that two. Then, you know, if we, I'll just call this R for our sake, now I can do an evaluation. If that R is less than or equal to two, uh, true. Else, false. Okay, so we've got a, a good idea of how we want to, uh, we, we've wrapped our head around the math of what this question is asking. Let's actually go about uh, solving it, so to speak. So the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to just copy uh, this text from this website uh, over into my own little block of code on Jupyter. This is just going to be so I can have easy reading. I am going to add one more to this since we've been working off of that 72. And I don't know the special key for that arrow, so I'll just magically do it like that. So now that we're kind of working off of that, we, we see a few different examples. I'll make one more just for our sake, 74. All right, well, this is going to error out if I try and run it because it's not code. So I'm going to highlight everything hold down control and hit the slash key. That's gonna make everything a comment. Uh, and then I'm just going to do some little bit of fiddling with the text uh, so I can do that quite easily. There. Okay, so we've established, we've got our, our problem. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore the function process part of this. I'm not gonna worry about that because uh, again, I'm, I'm wanting to make sure that I've got my logic correct before expanding out on it. So the first thing I need to do is establish a num, and we'll work off of that 12 to start, uh, so to speak. And so the next thing I need to do is, again, I need to get my remainder. So remainder 
is going to equal num modulo 10. Okay, so we've got that uh, first part uh, taken care of. Then the next aspect that we need to work off of is we need to make our evaluation. If remainder is less than or equal to two, print, we'll just say uh, yes for now, else print no. And there we go, okay, I've ran it, I tested it, awesome, fantastic. We throw it on that 72, works, 74, we should see a no, awesome. Now it's time to convert this into a function. So simple, very easy kind of approach to this. I'll start with building out that functions near 10 with num. I no longer need this uh, first value of num equals 74 because that is going to be passed to me via the num parameter. So I can get rid of this. And then I'm just going to highlight everything and hit tab. That's going to push everything into my function and we can work from there. So now uh, I am going to get rid of these uh, print statements because I'm specifically at least to the problem. It says to return true if the num is within two. So we need to sort of uh, adhere to the rules of the problem. So in this case, return true, return false. Okay, so I'll just kind of do a very quick check on this real fast. True, awesome. That i made a call to it using 12 and Jupyter will magically do this for me. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna take these little test cases and just move them down. And more specifically, I'm going to use these as my test bed to see if everything works. So again, they're all comments right now, but I can highlight them, control slash again. They're no longer comments. Uh, but they are, you know, I still need to make them a string in this case, uh, manually. And I am going to modify and just tweak these just ever so slightly. So I want to say that this is my expected and I'll just highlight and put that everywhere. And then I will also have an actual section that we'll get into in just a second. So actual, actual, that should be false, false, actual, actual, and good thing I caught it. Uh, but now I'll come in and let's see. Comma, 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 chameleon. That was for me. That was not for you. Sometimes you, you know, you just kind of, you need to have a little something going on in your head while you're, you're coding. Uh, 72 and 74. And the last little thing I will do is add in a print command at the front. There we go. So what I've just done, all of this coding uh, is this first section, or rather I'll just start here. This first section tells me what function I am actually calling uh, and more specifically printing it out so that I can do a comparison and know which one maybe screws up. Uh, then I have what I expect the value to be. And luckily, uh, CodingBat had some, and then I did two for myself, 72 and 74, uh, that we worked out in uh, on the little whiteboard. And then I have a, a section specifically for the actual result. Even though I think it should be true or false or true or true or false, that may not always be the case, right? I may have coded something incorrectly, but we confirm that by saying shift enter and we see true with true, false with false, true with false, okay. Okay, oh, okay, oh, okay, oh, okay. Um, so where we're going on with this part is specifically 
We've only been doing things that are ahead of 10. We never did anything that was behind 10. So uh, if we're sort of thinking about this in here, uh, so if we're looking at 19 modulo 10, that's going to produce a 9. And if we were looking at an 18, because that's still technically correct, that's going to produce an 8. So we need something that is uh, less than or equal to 2 or uh, greater than and equal to 8. Okay, okay. So this is a compound conditional statement. This can be true or this can be true. And so to expand on that, that's wrong window. So if we came in, so if remainder is less than or, or equal to two, or remainder is greater than or equal to eight. Reload this into memory, rerun this. There we go, okay. So true, we get a true, false, we get a false, true, we get a true, true, we get a true, false, we get a false. Okay, and that is one of the reasons why you do multiple tests because you do want to confirm and check each one of these. Uh, um, you could have done this a few other ways as well, just to show them off. So this if statement, right? I don't technically need to make this an if with returns. Since we're dealing with Boolean values, I could have actually done return remainder this or that. Because remember what this sort of configuration is going to evaluate out to is a value if remainder is less than two or remainder is greater than or equal to eight that by itself is going to produce a value just as a little example here uh so let me copy that not all of it just to show this as an example for a second let's imagine that remainder is six right well, then the question is, uh, this print statement of what is the value of this conditional statement? So remainder six, that's not less than two, and it's not greater than eight. So that should be a false statement. And it is, in fact, a false statement. Or in this case, we have a one. That's a true statement. So just my, getting to my point what we could have done rather than doing if statements since we're dealing with evaluations you could have also done a return uh and this would evaluate out into that same value uh without having to be explicitly the ifs and elses so again running through and there you have it